afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. There's no shortage of news reports when it comes to the misuse of alcohol. Most of the stories relate to underage drinking or the amount of alcohol use or illegal drug abuse among people under the age of 30. But there is another side of alcohol and drug use that we don't see or hear about as often. It's the alcohol and drug use of older Vermonters, those, those age 65 and older. Recent studies have shown that alcohol and drugs are a significant and underreported problem in the senior population. So our guests today are two experts on the issue of alcohol and drug abuse among older Vermonters. Joining me are Charlie Gurney and Cinda Daunton. Charlie is a substance abuse and aging coordinator with the Department of Disabilities, Aging and Independent Living and the Vermont Department of Health. And Cinda is an elder care clinician with Rutland Mental Health Services. Thank you both for coming in. Let's get started at by talking a little bit about um, each of you and your backgrounds and the work that you do. So Charlie, why don't you start? Okay, I've been involved with substance abuse treatment for many, many years. Uh, I've kind of lost track because <laughs> it's just points <laughs> decades. Um, but I didn't, in all of those years, really have much contact with older adults with substance abuse problems. Some, but not a lot. But since I uh, took this position with the state, which is just created, uh, and, and I'm the first one to, to do it, I've fully concentrated on this age group, so I started out really by reading a lot of literature and research on the subject so that I could be, become aware and then could, from there, know how to address the problem. Mm -hmm. And so were you surprised by some of the things that you were learning? Oh, absolutely. One of the biggest surprises for me is the extent of misuse of substances by older adults. When I say misuse, I mean not at the level of abuse or addiction, but really at the level where there's significant risk to health and harm to health. That occurs a lot with seniors. I mean, the, the estimate in terms of percentage of people 65 and older in Vermont with drinking, particularly drinking at a, at a risk level, it's about 20%. Really? Yes, it's a lot. Whereas those who need treatment, I mean, particularly addiction treatment, that's probably one or one and a half percent. So, I mean, there's really a large group of older adults who really need education and prevention services as opposed to, you know, treatment services. Not that some don't need treatment services. Mm -hmm. Some very much need treatment services, and they're not receiving the treatment services they need either. So that's, that's another problem. <laughs> so, Cinda, how about you? Well, I became the elder care clinician for Rutland Mental Health 15 years ago, and that's when the program started. I, I was one of the initial people hired throughout the state um, because this program runs statewide, and there's one of me in every county. And what we do is, is we provide home-based counseling in seniors' homes um, for a variety of mental health issues, including substance abuse um, and uh, substance misuse. Mm -hmm. And so do you work together? Well, kind of, yes. <laughs> kind of. He, Charlie has been um, overseeing, he had been overseeing the elder care program for mm -hmm. the Department of Disabilities, Aging and Independent Living. But we also have collaborated on a special um, program in Rutland. Okay, so how much of a problem is alcohol and drug use among older adults, those so age 65 and older? I know we have some graphics to illustrate this. In terms of the level of addiction, probably about the same as other adults but at the level of misuse, more. And we just saw one of the graphics, which I think was a graphic of the percentage of binge drinking among older adults. And in Vermont, we are at 9% of this population binge drinks. Let's talk and about the, what a standard drink is. A standard drink is 12 ounces of beer, five ounces of wine, about eight or nine ounces of uh, craft beer mm -hmm. or a shot, you know, a typical ounce and a half of, of whiskey. Mm -hmm. And so that would be a standard drink. And so um, what are people, what are, what are you finding from people? Are they drinking significantly more than this? There's, yes. Uh, <laughs> like, like I said, there's a, a large number, percentage wise, of older adults in Vermont who binge drink or who are chronic drinkers. I mean, I know that when uh, Monica Hutt, the commissioner, 
of the Department of Disabilities Aging Independent Living was on this show. Mm -hmm. She mentioned the chronic drinking among older adults. And at that point, we have the, the chart that I see up, that one up there. Mm -hmm. But since then, the United Health Foundation has come out with the new health rankings. Right. And we are doing even worse. We are, even though Vermont is considered a very healthy state, we are 50th for chronic drinking among older adults. We are the worst among chronic drinking with older adults. Why is that? I think it's been a growing problem, and because we haven't addressed it yet very much, it's continued to grow. We certainly have a growing you know, population, aging population, aging right. population, but basically I think it's a growing problem. And so the need to respond to that and intervene and basically educate and help, in my mind, is really pretty great. So are alcohol and drug problems for older adults different than other adults? I would say mostly, but not entirely. Mm -hmm. I mean, one way they're different, I think the main uh, drug of, uh, that's a problem is alcohol, as opposed to younger adults when it's other drugs you know, that a lot are affected by. Mm -hmm. Not that older adults don't abuse opiates, because they are prescribed a, a lot of opiates, and right. so some do abuse, but most of their abuse of opiates is prescribed opiates. It's not, you know, it's not street drugs, it's prescriptions they get from the pharmacy. So, Cinda, tell me about some of the work that you're doing, because you have a really unique program that you've been working on. So, um, several years ago, I, uh, I was realizing that um, people don't stay in alcohol treatment for very long, and I was having difficulty getting specialized services for seniors, and I decided that um, it might be a good idea to start treating seniors in their homes for alcohol and drug use. So I uh, talked to Sandy Conrad at the Southwestern Vermont Council on Aging about this, and she had received a $10,000 grant from the Department of Disabilities, Aging, and Independent Living, and she said, let's, let's do it, let's hire an LADC because I, the, my program is a collaboration between Rutland Mental Health and the, the Southwestern the, the Vermont LADC Council. And LADC is a licensed alcohol and drug council. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> so we did. We hired one, and we started taking referrals and seeing people in their homes, and it was pretty successful, but we, we only had a very small amount of money. So I started talking to my supervisor and Sandy about writing a grant. So I sat down with Heather Baker from the Council on Aging, and we wrote a grant with some other help from Sandy, from other people at the Council on Aging, and we were awarded this grant through the United Way, and we put in place some um, service coordination and follow-up, and then I approached ADAP, and um, Charlie was instrumental in that, and they decided to help fund a position so that we could basically have almost a full-time people um, taking referrals, figuring out you know what would be the best treatment uh, for the individual and actually providing the treatment, and we're really excited about it. So it sounds like that's really kind of the problem, is that um, for older Vermonters, it seems like the individual approach works a lot better than a group approach, as far as you know, getting, getting help with alcohol dependency. It can be, well, it, group approaches work well if you can get people to the groups. That's the hard part, because um, Vermont is a truly rural state, right. and getting people to a group is very difficult um, at times, although we've start, we've we've done that in a congregate housing site, we actually have done done groups, but it, it's harder to do it. And I think you're right. I think an individualized approach where there's a strong collaborative team between the medical providers, the mental health providers, and and, and substance abuse providers, and, and the, the elder care services, and the housing mm -hmm. sites, and the elder care. So it, it's 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 really seems to be the best way to go because these people tend to have. Um, significant health issues, mobility issues. Um, there's just, it really does take a village. What else do you think needs to be done? We haven't mentioned yet, and they are involved with this effort with me, and actually they've shown a great deal of interest, is the recovery centers across the state. You know, like the Turning Point Centers? Mm -hmm. They have recovery coaches. Many of their recovery coaches are older folks. And so they are in a good position to be, have kind of like a peer you know, relationship with somebody they're working with. And they have the capacity to do some outreach. So I think the recovery centers are an important asset and part of the uh, community solution that we need 
involves them as well as the healthcare profession and the uh, uh, alcohol and drug counselors and the mental health folks. It's really, and the elder care professionals. It's all of those folks working together. And a key thing is really working together. It is like forming a community work group of these different agencies who focus on this particular problem for their community. How can they better serve this age group, mm -hmm. both by way of treatment and by way of education and prevention. Another big problem, although there, um, I recently learned that there is a facility, I can't remember the name of it, but there is a facility, but it's been difficult getting people who needed residential care, or seniors who have significant health issues, like they're on continuous oxygen or they have re real mobility issues. It's been hard getting them into residential places that will take them. Um, and that is a gap that we want to bridge because some people do need residential treatment and then they need rehab afterwards because their bodies are debilitated by the substance misuse. Right, and I, would, I mean, that's just, it's a snowball effect at yes. that point. So are there tools for self-assessment of alcohol abuse and is that, is that the place to start? Yes, yeah, there is a specific screening tool called the Short Michigan Alcohol Screening Test Geriatric Version mm -hmm. that I actually have been going around the state training elder care professionals like case managers from the Council on Aging and aging, uh, Area Agencies on Aging and the SASH uh, coordinators and wellness nurses, those folks, training them on using this specific screening tool because this is an age-specific screening tool. There's lots of good screening tools out there, but there's not a lot of age-specific ones. This is one of those, and that's why we encourage using it and it is being used i know the sash program now root and you know what that is mm -hmm. the substance uh, support and assistance at home program right okay i know they include this smasg in their routine evaluation of all new clients can and you give me some examples of some of the things that might be on this particular um assessment versus a, a, maybe a, another kind of assessment there's more questions having to do with health effects because that's more often what the consequence is for this age group for misuse and abuse. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I think that is sort of the big difference is um, substance abuse for someone who's younger versus someone who's older. I, there's probably misuse among younger folks too. Right. But it's the proportion of that for the age group that I'm really struck by that this is an age group, namely seniors, where that is such a prevalent problem. And it's compounded by some things that make it more of a problem. One of those is the um, number of seniors that are on alcohol interactive medications. These are medications that interact negatively with alcohol. Right. And they're already taking these medications and even though the bottle may say, don't drink alcohol when you're taking this medication, that's not very well understood or, or appreciated generally across the public, and it needs to be. Mm -hmm. um, I'm particularly encouraged, I recently saw that the Governor's Commission on Successful Aging in their last report specifically mentions substance use and alcohol problems among older adults and that we need to do more by way of treatment and education. They also specifically mention the elder care clinicians across the state that are with the mental health centers, that that program needs to be expanded. So <laughs> see, see. some people are, are being, have become aware and are beginning to advocate for improving these services mm -hmm. for this age group. Seniors, um, get, they, they get used to drinking at a certain rate. And when you get older, your liver doesn't metabolize alcohol the way it used to. It doesn't metabolize any drug like it used to. It's, it, it's much slower. So they're used to drinking a certain level and thinking that it's okay and then they get older and they're still drinking at the same level and it's, and it's really having harmful effects on the body. And I don't think that they necessarily connect that. Although it is, I would say it's one of the main reasons they end up in institutions because it, uh, they fall a lot. Um, so it's, it's really a big concern that the drinking doesn't slow down to adapt for the older body. Quickly, how can someone, uh, family or friends, support older adults that have alcohol or drug problems? Where should they, where should they look for help? Well. Ultimately, as I said earlier, this is going to take a community response, but on an individual and family level, 
I think what people need to do is first see it as a health problem mm -hmm. and be aware of how much of a health problem it is and talk about it in those terms, including with their mother, father, whoever they may be talking to, not about your drinking problem, but rather the health consequences of your drinking. They can use that kind of language. It's a lot more helpful. Well, I want to thank you both for joining me today. It's a really important topic. That's our program for today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.